running this thing, but uh, yeah, we are, we're trying to get as far out as possible. And welcome to Madeira. Yes, despite the pictures you saw at the beginning there, we did make it and we've got lovely sunshine to welcome us. And the mast stayed up, which is which is good news <laughs> for all of us. But yeah, it was a bit hairy. I hope you like the film. Coming up, the storm from nowhere. 50 knots and we are caught in the middle. Three days of being battered by wind and rain. And the other side of cruising, a trip to Seville. And this is where we begin. From Sopramar in Portugal to Seville in Spain is about a three-hour drive. The border is the Guardiana River, and here we visit the picturesque town of Alcutim. Plenty of boats cruise and stay on the river, where it's very quiet and peaceful. The town is made up of just a few streets. Surrounding the 13th century castle of Alcutim, designed as a first line of defence to protect Portugal from possible invasion from Spain. More recently, the stone walls are simply a tourist attraction. Well, there isn't a bridge that stretches across the river, but there is something. If you look at the top, where that fort is, there's a zip wire in the summer that you can ride to go from Portugal into Spain. And it takes minus 58 minutes to get there because, because of the time difference. It's 12 o'clock here, it's one o'clock over there. So you come over here, change an hour, and then go back again, presumably by ferry. But we're off to Seville. So we have streets lined with orange trees. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, <laughs> going through a town with orange trees everywhere. Well, I don't know what Seville's known for, but I think they're, uh, they're not ones you can scrump, because I think they're ones for marmalade, aren't they, Seville oranges? Yeah, quite, quite strong, <laughs> a bit quite sharp, strong taste then, sharp taste. Magnificent buildings and orange trees everywhere. In fact, it's hard to take a picture without them. We haven't got some battle boarding. I know, I thought that was quite keen. <laughs> but it's great, there's loads over there. Yeah, I think it's a tour. It's great. It's great that people are actually using the river. That's yeah. the nice thing, I think. Yeah, it's perfect weather. It's just like middle of summer. It is. It's the end of November. But I know, it's amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> really lucky. Seville is a delight whatever time of year. It's the fourth largest city in Spain and possibly the prettiest. Goldfish, can you believe? <laughs> One thing we don't expect when we arrive is that it is Japanese week here. Always new things to discover and learn. Whoa! Like this. Oh, you have okay. a shoe like this. Shoot like that, okay. From the relay? Thank you. Whoa! I'm not supposed to do that, are you? You just destroyed their work of art. I think I better go. Because <laughs> 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 we're building it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the heart of Seville is the Plaza de España. The heart of Seville is the Plaza de España, built in Maria Luisa Park for the Expo in 1929. It is breathtaking. Mm. 
Mosaics showcase every region in the country along the arc of the building. And the deeper you go, the more intense the performance. This is street dancing at a whole other level. The rest of the city is best seen by bike. South of the river is where the ship workers used to live and is the less touristy part. But the main centre of the town is home to a castle, churches, mosques and cobbled streets. History of the city is told through the buildings, Roman, Islamic, Baroque and modern day. Stunning. Back to Fair Isle and back to work. Okay, getting a few final jobs done here then while we're out on the hard. I uh, want to replace this rub rail. This was uh, some damage we had in Greece in Simi. And um, we're up against the customs key and uh, a super yacht came in much too fast to smash us against the key. And it, it bent uh, a piece of our rub rail and smashed the wood. So I, I did the wood replacement last year in, uh, in Montenegro. And uh, yeah, I haven't been able to get this, this rail because it's, you know, it's much thicker than the, the usual sort of rub rails that you get on boats. So it didn't have any in the Chandlers, but they can make just about anything here. So, so actually what they do is they got, they got a stainless steel bar and just bent it around and uh, yeah, that'll fit in perfectly. So I'll get this cut and drilled and put that on, get another job done. Now, one of the things about getting everything in pieces is you find little bits of wear and stuff going on. In fact, I did know about this one on the end of the boom before because I could feel some odd movement going on there. So while it's off, I've got to do this. I'll show you what the problem is. This is the pin that goes through and it is now loose in there. It's fine actually on the uh, oh, gooseneck on the, on the mast here. So it goes through, the middle goes through there, stainless steel, that's all absolutely fine. But the bit in the aluminium is worn, so I've got to do something about that. And I think the easiest way to do that is to sleeve it. So I've got a tube that fits nicely on top of the top of that. And if I ream this out to the right size, bang that in there, cut it off so it's just a slice that's inside and just uh, have a little bit of a go with a hole cutting tool and probably finish it off in a file. Get it exactly the right size to get that nice and tight.
and a final job getting the boom back on the mast. So nearly a month after our planned relaunch, we are now ready to go. Feral has never been so well looked after, with a plastic sheet to protect the top sides. Just a few patches to touch up once the supports are off. This part is always slightly nerve-wracking, but all good, we are in the water. That's a relief, back <laughs> in. Always a good feeling. And the sun is shining. The sun's shining. Let's go for a little spin around the bay, shall we? Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> or just a few minutes round to Marina de la Gauche. So it's a lovely morning. We are in the marina. Very nice to be out. Got to get a few jobs done though, early morning, so no wind. So I've got the uh, spanner hanging from a, a line just to uh, see what I've got. I haven't got enough rake and I haven't got enough pre-bend at the moment. Uh, I haven't got a, a gauge either, so I can't actually come around here and measure any of my tensions, but I'm pretty certain I, uh, you know, I can get that right pretty much by hand it's you know it's the static tune anyway you, you're always going to change it with the dynamic and uh, i mean basically i'm using these sorts of size 10 inch type spanners so you know you're not gonna be able to do it up too tight with something like that unless you're arnold schwarzenegger we're doing the rig tightening in two stages once in the marina here and then we'll do it again when we're out sailing Getting the mast straight, of course, is important, and uh, I tend to rely mainly on the plumb bob hanging down, being straight, because I pretty much know that that Fair Isle sits pretty square in the water from you know lots of early mornings being out in the dinghy and sighting here. You can sort of see it. It's difficult; it's not an exact science, but the other way, of course, is with the, uh, the halyard. So I can bring that down. This isn't exact either, certainly with the, these sorts of halyards, because you've got a bit of stretch in them. <laughs> I've got Dyneema halyards, and uh, I'm finding a run where. You're not going to touch anything on the way down, it's difficult. I'll do one here and I'll do one on the, uh, on the tow rail and just sort of take an average. I mean, the other thing is, you know, no boats are straight. You think your tow rails are going to be even either side? On this boat, probably not. You know, they could be, I don't know, a few a centimetre or two out, really. So you can't rely on any of this stuff, but you've got to just take an average, really. So let's have a look, see where this one is. I'll get this one level with there. I'll do one on the tow rail as well. My bit of tape, see what it's like on the other side. So the plumb bob was a bit inconclusive this morning because there was a little bit of wind there. That looked pretty straight. <clears throat> Maybe if anything, a slight tilt over to starboard, but this mark is dead on the bottom of that. The other side comes to the top of the track and this one, the top of the mark, sorry, the bottom of the mark comes to top of the chain plate. So yeah, that looks, Good enough for me for the moment. So I get, I'll have a double check when we're on a, a nice still morning and an anchorage. But yeah, we can move on to the dynamic check now when we're sailing, I think. And we are finally on our way. Amazing, we've been here ooh, a little bit longer than we anticipated. Had one or two issues, but now we're, we're going to... Where are we going, Steve? Yay! <laughs> Yeah, we're off. Big voyage. Yeah, it's fair off through the bridge. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're off to Madeira. Well, round the corner first, actually, to check the rigging, as one does, and he's <laughs> done a, a major job like that. But then we're off to Madeira, so we're ready to go. Okay, so we're sailing along, got 15 knots on the beam. Might get a bit more in a minute, which is good because I want sort of 20 knots really to, to do this. I'll put the Yankee up as well before I do it for real, but I just thought now well, I've got the main up, come and have a little look. The lever shrouds. Seems pretty good. I mean that could go maybe a tiny bit tighter, but I think that's okay actually. The cap shroud's the one really. That's okay. And I think yeah, that's that could do with a little bit the forward baby stay here but yeah that's not that's not bad at all we get the uh, get the yankee up 
wait for a little bit more wind and see if I get some more slack. At the moment, I think it's just a couple of turns on this one, which I'll do on both sides, and just tack over and, uh, and check, make sure it's all okay both sides, and obviously make sure the mast stays straight. We're nice and straight at the moment. Just need to keep it that way. Okay, so I'm just sighting the mast. All looks good. Got the Yankee up as well now. Got a bit of a reef in it. Uh, I'll probably take that out in a minute once I've done this. But yeah, it still feels, feels like the only one that really needs it is this one. Do a couple of turns on both sides. I'm going to attack and check the other side. Took a couple of tacks until we were happy. Okay, so you might be able to see on the water we've got a few gusts coming through now. So I've just taken her off auto helm, and uh, actually, yeah, she's <laughs> she's luffed up straight away. That's uh, that, that's good. You want a little bit of weather helm in the gusts. That's all okay. There's no reason why it shouldn't be because we've got the mast back in the right position, just uh, with the right sort of rake on it. But yeah, it's as well to it's as well to check. Yeah, that's nice. This short trip is to get us a bit further along the coast to an anchorage before leaving tomorrow for Porto Santo, an island next to Madeira. Well, it's a lovely morning. It's a bit rolly in this anchorage though, which is a bit of a shame because uh, I didn't get a great night's sleep and this was our last opportunity for the next, what, four or five nights probably. But yeah, it's a nice place. This is Sagres Bay. You can see the lighthouse up on the, uh, up on the cliff there. Just around the corner, Cabo St. Vincent is the most westerly point in, uh, in Portugal, well, in Europe. So yeah, we're just about to go off and go past it. Not a lot of wind. It's uh, a bit of a shame because today's supposed to be the best day for wind, I think. But anyway, we worry about that when we get out there. Got a few jobs to do first. I'm going to put the uh, split pins back in all of the, uh, all the rigging now because I think I've got it how I want it yesterday. So yeah, get ready to go. I don't know if you can see that, but we're getting the jack lines on for this crossing. I don't think we're anticipating any particularly bad weather, but always as well to be prepared. Yeah, it's good to have it offshore. I mean, we've got the ultra line at the back. We can run around quickly if you ever, you know, needed it in the med, but we don't normally have the permanent ones on. But yeah, going offshore, so might as well. Might as well get them on. Just about enough wind to sail. Bit flappy, got the preventer on, but yeah, not going particularly well, which is a bit of a shame because this is supposed to be the best day out of the uh, four days going by predict wind. But yeah, if it's got this day wrong, then hopefully it's got the other ones wrong. So uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, we've had quite a bit of rain actually uh, this morning and no wind, which is why I've got my wet weather gear on. I think I might go and change it now. But I'm sitting out here just looking for orcas, we have to be on orca watch on this park because there's been quite a few around actually just coming around this bottom corner. They're chasing the tuna back down south now and into the med. So yeah, there's been a few reports and a few attacks. Uh, made me laugh actually, I saw Zatara's Keith. Keith has got uh, some firecrackers like ours. Ooh. Yeah, very flappy, but not really like ours because his are enormous, they're about 10 times the size. He's got proper depth charges. But yeah, I don't think we need them. I don't think we're gonna need ours. We are going to have to look out for, for boats though. I'm in the, uh, the shipping lanes at the moment. There's four shipping lanes that come around the southeast corner of, uh, of Portugal. And there's a ship up there. It's on the north going one. We're in the south going one, just coming out of it now. And uh, haven't seen any in that lane, so yeah, we'll just keep a watch. We might go and tighten these sails though. That's a little bit too flappy for my liking. The shipping lanes stretch for about 36 miles, so we spend most of the day sailing through them. At night we have a bit of wind to begin with, then it drops off and we have to motor. But at dawn we get some wind again. 
What a difference a couple of hours can make. We've now got all the sails up and we're heading in pretty much the right direction. We're going a little bit north of Porto Santo because the wind's due to come round, but then it should push us in in another couple of days. So another couple of days and nights at sea. But I hope we've turned the corner now and it should be plain sailing, as they say, from now on. That would be nice. So I'm just planning the second half of the uh, passage. I've got predict wind up. I'll put it up on the uh, on the screen here so you can see it. Um, if you saw one of the earlier episodes when we were doing a passage from uh, Montenegro to uh, Malta at the beginning of the season, I, I took up the, the two week uh, free trial that they had of predict wind pro. And it's really good for that passage. So I've, I've got it now for, for going across the Atlantic and we're testing it out here. But I've come across one of the early problems with this. Uh, when you're using Starlink, it does doesn't put your position on the predict wind map. Um, I've got it now. I found a way of, of, of doing it, uh, and I'll put that in the in the Starlink video. It's got a sort of technical thing. I'm sure there's probably a di few different ways of doing it, but with the gear that we've got on board, I found a I found a way of making it work for me. But before, I didn't know exactly where we were, and as you can see from the map here, it's quite important exactly where we are because we're right on the edge of this this front that's coming through. If we'd managed to get to the north of it, which is sort of what we were trying to do uh, last night, we would have been on this lovely conveyor uh, at the north there with the wind right behind us. As it is though, we've got headwinds down here, so we've got to try and make the best of it. Um, and looking at the different predictions in here, it looks like the blue one, Predict Wind Global, is the most uh, accurate at the moment. So I'm going to go with that one. So I'll just hide the other ones on here. So we've just got that one on. So this is the route that it's suggesting you take. Um, and this whole first section is actually motoring. Um, the little exclamation mark in the second section there is because they think there, there might be lightning across there. Uh, by the time you get to that area, you can see there's some wind sort of coming through, a bit of a front coming through of where it sort of forms into one big low. Um, but, but yeah, um, the problem with this one is if you look at the tables for it, let's go on the summary you can see that they are motoring for 17 hours, 10 minutes and two seconds. Well, we don't want to motor for 17 hours. We're not really in that much of a rush. So we're not going to do it that way. Um, that would be the quickest way. That gets you in at eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So it'd be interesting to see how far behind that we are doing it our way. But at the moment, we're heading a bit north of that um, and we're going to get maybe just caught in one of those little doldrums as it comes through, have a little bit of motoring, but then just tack our way down in the wind that's, that's there. Well, this is dawn of day two. It's not been a great night. It uh, wasn't a great night the first night either. We didn't get a lot of uh, wind and tonight we got wind, but it was right on the nose. So uh, yeah, I'll put the deck lights on. You can see the sails. We've got uh, just the, the staysail out and a, a reefed mainsail. It's uh, yeah, been bashing into the waves. You just, oh, I don't know, so unlucky because a trip like this sh should get northerlies. You should be on a reach the whole way across. But yeah, yeah, the nights have been really quite bad. So I'm hoping that we get out of this now quite quickly. It's a cold front that's there and we just caught the wrong side of it. But we've got the Starlink here, so you know we can get our weather updates and try and get a, a good, accurate fix on that and get ourselves into the right bit because it really makes a difference if you're just sort of five miles one side or another, the other side of this cold front. So yeah, we'll see if we can get ourselves positioned. Well, that didn't quite work out. Later in the morning, it's raining and the wind and waves are gathering and not in a good way at all. We are facing a gale. This storm is like whipping round. It's like, you see it on the chart, and it's just this circle that goes, woo, thank goodness we're not in the middle. We hope to be spat out, I don't know, in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until then, just glad we've got a good house sitting here. We're sort of okay, we had to hold two for a bit, but. We're, uh, we're just sailing out now. And this is the scene for the rest of the day. 30 knots and choppy seas. And it turns out there is worse to come. Our new changed wind prediction is this. What was a small area of 25 knot winds is now a 500 mile area of a severe force nine gale. And we will be right in the middle of it. That white dot just south of the center Yep, that's us. At its worst, winds will be gusting up to 50 knots. It's already sort of getting going. We're trying to go fast to get as far west as possible. There's no way about running this thing, but uh, yeah, we are, we're trying to get as far 
out as possible. You don't like going fast, though, do you? <laughs> Not particularly, no. I think we should, um, yeah, we need to get as far as we can, but then reef, then heave to, and then get out the other side. <laughs> yeah, we're going to reef now, actually, because it's, it's getting a bit hairy. So I'll get, uh, I'll get the Yankee put away completely, get the uh, staysail down to a third reef and the, and the main down to a third reef. So we can heave to when we get to it and then maybe try and sort of hook out of it uh, at some point. But yeah, it's not going to be not going to be pleasant. We've had two reefs in for most of the day and getting the third reef is proving a bit tricky with the new sails. I hadn't tried the third reef before. I can't actually get it on the horn because uh, the ring's a little bit too short, so I'm going to put a shackle in between. Oh, it's going to clip on. The problem is that on the third reef there's so much of the new stiff mainsail between the cringle and the horn that I just couldn't get it over. Solution just extended a bit. That's it. That'll do. Flag off the back. It's a new one, don't want to lose it. No. <laughs> it's interesting what they say about the lull before the storm. Well, I think we're as ready as we can be. It's getting a little bit blurry out there, but it's difficult to know. This wind is going to curve around, so it starts on one side, then goes right round to the other side. So that's what we're waiting for. It can happen any time in the next few hours. It's just really difficult to tell. So we're just waiting now, really. Well, we're waiting and moving. We've got the motor on, so we're going as fast as we can so that we can get to the other side as quickly as we can. At the moment, the wind is gusting at about 30 knots, which is bad enough. But the worst thing is knowing that it's going to get a whole lot worse. No moon or stars tonight, so not many pictures. As you can imagine, we spend most of the night inside the cockpit waiting for dawn. And now it's raining on top of all the storm last night, the <laughs> spinning wind, hove to, 40 knot winds. Hey. Rain. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Do something different. It would get boring if it was always the same. Look at that. What have you? Okay, we've got a dog house. Yeah, so am I. Sunshine would be lovely. Not a chance, but we do have pictures So as you can see it has calmed down a little bit now, blowing uh, 
still do 28, getting gusts to about 30, 35, but not so many now. And it looks like we're out of the rain. We've got blue skies all through here. Still a little bit left over there. But uh, yeah, looking at the weather map, if it's right, we're sort of off the edge of the, the really dark red stuff now, which was the stuff that was uh, that had a 45 knot gust in it, which you know, get a little bit much. The Starlink's still holding up well. Uh, I was going to take it off, but I am checking the weather on it, and it seems to be it seems to be okay. The, uh, the solar panels were just buffeting a bit at the front here, so that's why I put that rope round just to give it a little bit more, which uh, it seems to be doing. As I say, wind has, wind has dropped a bit now. It's going to take another couple of hours until we're out of the red stuff though, but we are out of the really dark, dark red stuff, the 45 knots. So, so yeah, we'll keep doing this. I mean, we are making life difficult in a way, just pounding against it a little bit. Um, we're just going slowly. We're making, well, we're making five knots actually away at the moment, just under a, a scrap of staysail and a third reef in the main. Um, but yeah, we'll, you know, if we can do this, it's better because we are still making way to our destination and we could run with it, but then we're going to give ourselves another day trying to come back. And there is another storm coming in actually behind this one, so it's as well to, uh, to get in if we can. Um, but yeah, if it, gets, if it gets worse, we'll just hope to again and, uh, and ride it out of it. <laughs> well, it's been an interesting day. Yeah, it has. Well, the rain stopped, that's the good news but the wind and the sea state did not. It's been just incredible, <laughs> what just do you mean? incredible. It's, it's eased now completely. Look, there's no white horses or anything. This is a balmy 25 knots, not 40. So yeah, it yeah. Is, you know, feels a lot better, doesn't it? But yeah, it's not exactly You do not calm, want to look inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, I'm looking... a mess. It's, put it this way, our boat is not quite as watertight as we thought it was. <laughs> yeah, I have got the, uh, the seals for all the portholes, which was one of the jobs I was going to do before we launched, and other more important ones took priority, but the mast is still standing, so that's good. Doing a good test for it. I think the mast is about the most solid thing about this boat at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the occupants, the captain and the crew, are a little bit wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the boat's always better than the crew, uh, and yeah, she's, she's done really well actually, just uh, on the auto helm, scrap of uh, staysail and uh, third reef in the main all day, and now a tiny bit more sail, not much. I'll give you a look actually. What we've got. So yeah, the wind's come around behind a little bit as well, haven't got any Yankee out, I might do later, but we're doing... We're only doing, what, 3.3 just because of the, uh, the amount of rolling that's happening. But we were doing like six or seven knots in the, you know, yeah. even with those massive seas. Yeah, so exactly. it's really quite punishing for the boat smashing through. But we should get there tomorrow afternoon. Yo, I have to say, <laughs> I'll be quite pleased to see Madeira. Well, yes. we're not going to Madeira, are we? Porto Santo. Yeah. Porto Santo, near Madeira. I'm navigating. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we were very pleased to be sailing into Porto Santo and we stayed there for a couple of days before coming here. We arrived yesterday, so that's bringing you up to speed as to why we're here. Yeah, we're trying to get down to the Canaries for Christmas and, uh, and trying to pick a good weather window this time to do it. Not that we picked that one on purpose. <laughs> yeah, we did not. In fact, we thought with all the passage planning that we'd done that we were, we were actually fine, but that, that storm just came out of nowhere. It did, 500 nautical miles across yeah. as well. So for people that say, oh, get a fast boat because you're gonna outrun storms, you could not outrun that one. So that's yeah. just living proof that, you know, that's, that's not a good tactic if, if that's gonna be your only tactic for, uh, for getting out of storms. Um, I mean, for us, we could sit with it relatively comfortable, you know, it's, well, it's not that comfortable, but... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say comfortable. No, but... no, but it's, it's doable. And, and actually we yeah. could even go into weather, which we continued to do. I um, mean, most boats you would have turned and had to go with it because the slamming, you know, this boat doesn't slam. Um, so, you know, we, we could do that, which meant we could get out quicker. If we had turned and ran with the storm, we would have been in it for at least three days all the way back to Portugal, because that's the way it was going. So, uh, you know, and you couldn't get out the bottom of it, it was too big. 
So yeah. Um, and we are in one piece and the yeah. mast is still on and yeah, I think you lost test. your fishing rod and that was, that <laughs> yes, was, that was the only casualty that we found. I say the only one, that's tragic obviously. Yeah, it is tragic. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put it away properly, it's my, my own fault. Uh, took it in just as it got dark and stuffed it down behind the box there and, uh, and didn't actually strap it away. It's because I was doing other things at the time like strapping down the dinghy and yeah. Thinking of yeah things that might you know need to be done before the storm really hit us because yeah you don't get much time to prepare in some of those situations mm. we didn't have a lot. We I, didn't. Mean, I mean luckily we'd done things like put the jack lines on first. I mean I know, we weren't expecting thought? bad weather, but <laughs> it shows again you know preparation even if you're not expecting is a good thing to do. But now we are in Madeira and we're going to stay here for a couple of days because it's a very green island mm. and I'm looking for waterfalls. There are waterfall walks, for goodness sake, in There's the middle waterfalls. of the Atlantic. So it's full-blown Christmas as soon as you get out of the yeah. marina as well. It's a, it's a wonderful place. Yeah, so we will spend a few days here and enjoy it as well. Uh, just like we enjoyed Seville at the beginning yeah. of, this, uh, of this piece. Really nice, isn't it? We didn't manage to get there when uh, when we stayed in Cartagena four years ago over winter, so we really wanted to make sure we got back. Yeah, we did, and I think I'll miss, when we leave Europe, I think I'll miss those historic cities. Mm. It's been fantastic yeah. over the past four years. Just yeah. everywhere you go, you get really good history. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll have to find the history of, of where we're going next, <laughs> <laughs> which we're looking forward to. So thank you very much to our patrons. Thank you very much to our subscribers. And thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please please do click the button because it does help us out. Thanks for watching.